Coming to clinical manifestations, you need to understand that in coarctation of aorta, there is a complete spectrum of abnormalities that can exist, ranging from on one side from neonatal manifestations, acute manifestation to asymmetric manifestation where one part of the body is getting affected more than other to completely asymptomatic children to, chill, to patients who actually present in adulthood. So different types of presentations can exist but for the sake of simplicity broadly two types of clinical manifestations we will be talking about. Right, the first form we will be talking about is the neonatal presentation. Neonatal presentation. Neonatal presentation, also called as infantile presentation, will happen in patients with severe or critical juxtaductal coarctation of aorta. Now try to understand what is happening here. Now let us let me show you diagrammatically. This is the arch of aorta. Okay. This is the brachiocephalic trunk. This is your left common carotid. This is your left subclavian artery and where is ductus arteriosus associated this is the side where the ductus arteriosus will be attached right so this is the site of ductus arteriosus attachment now imagine that there is a severe critical narrowing in the patient somewhere in a somewhere in a location like this so there is a severe presentation severe narrowing happening like this most of the neonatal severe forms which manifest, they have a narrowing very similar to this. Because if the narrowing is, you know, uh, distal to the insertion of ductus arteriosus, many of them will not be compatible with life and they often get aborted in utero. So what will happen is, in utero, in utero, the blood supply to descending aorta is being maintained through this ductus arteriosus, right? As soon as after birth, this ductus arteriosus closes, because of the narrowing, the amount of blood which is required to go into the descending aorta, that tends to get, to get significantly reduced. And so what will happen is, is, as soon as ductus arteriosus closes, these patients will present with severe shock. There will be absent pulses, especially in the lower limbs. There will be oligouria happening and there will be severe metabolic acidosis. These children will develop pallor with shock. They will not develop cyanosis with shock. You need to understand. There is a positive blood supply happening to the lower region. So unless you do something, the patient will die. Since systemic circulation is being maintained by ductus arteriosus, it is an example of a duct-dependent lesion. You give prostaglandin. The ductus arteriosus will open, it will ensure blood supply to the lower limbs till surgery can be undertaken. So such type of presentation will be seen in neonatal presentation where there is a severe critical juxtaductal coarctation of aorta. So how will the children manifest? As soon as ductus arteriosus closes, these children will have severe reduction in the descending aortic blood flow. This will manifest in the form of fall in the BP in the lower limbs. These children will develop oligouria, they will develop pallor and they will develop metabolic acidosis. So what is life saving in these patients? These patients need to be started on prostaglandin E1 IV infusion followed by emergency surgery. Neonatal presentation of coarctation of aorta is considered to be a type of ductus dependent circulation. It is a type of ductus dependent systemic circulatory lesion. Right? This is the first form. Rare but case can be asked in exam. The second presentation is the relatively common form what you call as the Child, late childhood presentation. Childhood presentation is found to be the more common variant. Now what happens in these patients is that the narrowing is there, but the narrowing is not severe. There is narrowing, but some amount of blood is still able to reach in the descending aorta. It is just that the narrowing, because of the narrowing, the child is unable to increase his cardiac output, increase his flow, it is a fixed 
cardiac output which is now happening and so whenever there will be periods of exertion whenever the child will walk suppose the child is running there will be pain in the lower limbs because correspondingly the blood flow cannot be increased in the lower limbs so these children will have a more gradual onset presentation so what are the points about childhood presentation that you need to know first it, it is more common secondly it will be asymptomatic it is usually asymptomatic in first few years of life when the requirements are less later on it will manifest with features of exercise intolerance they will manifest features of intermittent claudication like symptoms that is pain in the legs pain in the calf muscles when child runs which will be relieved when the child takes a rest when you what are what are the signs that you will find in these children you will find that in these children normally what happens is if you check for radial and femoral pulse normally the femoral pulse comes a bit earlier as uh, compared to radial pulse but here radial pulse will come first femoral pulse will be delayed the reason for that will be the femoral pulse is being uh, the femoral blood flow is being maintained by multiple collaterals and blood is taking a longer time to reach the femoral artery so first sign will be radio femoral delay so one of the common signs which can be asked in exam is radio femoral delay but you need to understand the radio femoral delay happens only when collaterals have developed see collaterals will develop in these patients because certain arteries have more blood supply certain arteries have less blood supply those which are arising proximal to the narrowing they have more blood those which are arising distal to it will have less blood then you will have hypertension occurring in the upper limbs and hypotension that is low bp will happen in the lower limbs chronically you will find that these children will develop asymmetry between upper limbs and lower limbs if you go to a gym and you find there will always be a few bodybuilders in a gym who are always doing like right through their last 10 years of existence they in gym they have all always done biceps triceps and chest and shoulder uh, exercises they never do leg exercises so the day they wear their shorts you will find that their upper limbs upper torso is very well developed so their biceps will look something like this when you look at their shorts when you look at their uh, lower limbs they will have lower limbs which are thin rickety like this so these children also look something like that so they will have very developed upper limbs poorly developed lower limbs asymmetry will develop and also you will find that these patients are found to have episodes of headache as well as subconjunctival hemorrhage why is it so see all the carotids and the subclavian artery vessels are arising proximal to the narrowing so blood supply in them is chronically increased and so there will be periods of headache subconjunctival hemorrhage they can also be related to the persistent hypertension which tends to develop in most of these patients right in addition when you do auscultation you will find that many of these patients will have a ejection systolic murmur in the third or fourth intercostal space near the left sternal border this will be due to narrowing turbulence being produced in that area and as i had said that 70% patients are found to have a bicuspid aortic valve also so those who are having bicuspid aortic valve these children will additionally show the presence of ejection clicks so this is a potential mcq point presence of ejection clicks in coarctation of aorta indicates what it indicates presence of underlying bicuspid aortic valve by itself bicuspid aortic valve is usually silent as age advances as age increases these children tend to develop features of congestive cardiac failure due to left ventricular dysfunction obviously the question can arise why see you need to understand what is happening here is there is a narrowing in the front 
it is not complete narrowing so to send blood across the narrowing to maintain output in the descending aorta left ventricle has to chronically generate more pressure to send blood across the narrowing so with each beat across all the lifetime so far the left ventricle is generating more pressure so what will happen is pressure overload features will start happening in left ventricle which will lead to thickening of the wall of lv and see a time will eventually come where the left ventricle will start failing remodeling of left ventricle will happen there is hypertension also in these patients so combination of chronic pressure overload and hypertensive changes due to co underlying coarctation will lead to left ventricle dysfunction so many of these patients will tend to develop ccf features as age advances so these are the features of the common variety juxtaductal form that you find when a patient presents to you in childhood or adolescent period Many of them are actually asymptomatic and Nelson also agrees that some can present even in adulthood also. Now there is a rare form of presentation also where the symptoms may be a bit dramatic. Consider the variety of pre-ductal coarctation where the narrowing is happening something like this. So this is your arch of aorta, this is brachiocephalic trunk, this is common carotid and this is the left subclavian artery. So this is your ductus arteriosus as insertion site, right? So preductal form will have, imagine the narrowing is happening here. So what will happen? Blood supply to right subclavian artery, that is right upper limb blood supply will be more, whereas left subclavian artery blood supply will be less. So in these patients, you will find asymmetry between right and left upper limb. The left upper limb as well as both the lower limbs will be atrophied whereas right upper limb will be hypertrophied in these patients and you can also find a radio radial delay as well between the two radial pulses. So what it means is the site and severity of coarctation will determine the symptoms the patient will develop. So point I am coming to you, the point that you need to understand is symptoms and signs in coarctation of aorta depend upon two factors. First is severity of narrowing and second is the location of narrowing. Right? So these are all the signs and symptoms that you will encounter in these patients.